Hey everybody, we're back out in the garden and today we're going to plant the Parfianca pomegranate. This is the time of year that you'll find bare root fruit trees and other things at your local nurseries, uh, at least in zone 9 where we live. Uh, last year we had a neighbor give us some pomegranates off of her tree and we juiced them and just couldn't get over how delicious it was and how tasty the juice was. Pomegranate juice and fruit also offers a lot of health benefits too by way of antioxidants and there is some research being done about uh, heart and artery health as well and besides that they're just delicious we decided to go ahead and pick up uh, one this year and put in our yard we live in a very hot uh, summertime climate and it's exactly what these things like and i've never heard of this variety before typically you'll see the wonderful uh, type pomegranate in most nurseries and in grocery stores when you buy the fruit. This one I've read a lot about It's called Parfianca and I've heard nothing but good stuff about it from what I can see Large size red fruit with small seeds barely noticeable very sweet and supposedly is a taste test uh, winner often in blind taste tests that they have here and there so we'll see. We're going to put this thing in the ground today and we'll see how it progresses and and uh, we're excited about it. We really enjoyed the fruits this last fall. Additionally, this gives us another fall fruit in our yard. Um, we try to follow the planting guide in our yard where we have fruits and things growing throughout the year. I'll give you a quick tour of our small yard. We just did the container garden uh, video recently you may have seen that if not go back and check it out it's got a lot of good information in it this year i i'm going to try these uh, elderberries some of you may have read about elderberries and the health benefits that they uh, believe they're finding with these things so we we're excited about these too we had to plant two for cross pollinization and uh We'll see how these work out, but I'm looking forward to having our own elderberries to process elderberry syrup. These are a couple of boysenberry plants over here. These are our triple crown blackberries. I've had these for probably four or five years now, and just with two bushes, we get just pounds and pounds of blackberries off these things. You'd be amazed at how much fruit these things produce. So we process jams and we bake uh, desserts and things in the summer, and these are just a great addition to any yard and we'll be talking about these more and more uh, as we go as the growing season begins and they start sprouting out we'll we'll cover the progression of that and the harvest that we get from them this is a little pink lemonade blueberry that we're gonna uh, we've just put in last year to kind of try out these are our main blueberry bushes uh, and these three containers this is a semi-dwarf nectarine tree uh, again this is in a very small space, and you can see how much stuff you can grow in a very small yard. We have a Meyer lemon tree that we really enjoy making lemonade out of in the summer. This is our burgundy plum tree that I planted as a bare root. Um, it was literally just a stick in the ground where I clipped it right there where you see the crotch of the limbs. And by pruning it that way, I was able to maintain the size of this thing. It's only, I don't know, 12 or maybe 15 feet tall or less, but we get a lot of burgundy plums off this tree. And I'll tell you, if you've never tasted one of those, you absolutely need to. They are, in our opinion, one of the best tasting fruits there is. And you, they're very difficult, if not impossible, to find uh, in stores, maybe farmer's markets and things like that. We planted this dwarfing uh, avocado some years ago. And it's a little tough to grow in my area because we get heat blasts around May that usually wipe out most of the little starting fruits on it at that time of year. But, you know, I'm, I'm able to get a few off of it each year. So we're still working on that and I'm learning as I go. And then to round out the fruit trees in the yard, this is a Fuyu persimmon, sometimes called the apple persimmon. These are grown... Uh, Again, largely in, in climates like ours, they're, uh, they're self-fruitful. They don't have to have a lot of chill hours uh, to grow, which is good because we don't get very many of them in this area. And again, the nice thing about this is this thing is producing its fruit. Um, actually, we're ready to harvest its fruit late October to mid-November, which 
as I was describing earlier, that gives us fruit and fresh things to eat out of this yard pretty much all season long. So that just gives you a brief overview of this small yard and how much you can do in a small space like this. It's common when you plant fruit trees, either bare root or potted, uh, you'll dig a hole, you'll hear all kinds of different theories, sometimes one to two times larger, and some people say it has to be a square hole or a round hole, and on and on it goes. Um, I found just by simply following the nursery or the growers recommendations on how to plant these things it's always worked out just fine for me in this case they're telling us just to dig a hole a little bit larger than the uh, potted uh, circumference and depth that we have so that's what i've done here and we're just going to simply take it out of the pot now and put it in the ground okay i just removed it from the pot and i roughed up a little bit of the root mass down at the bottom where it was balled up from being in the container too long now we're just going to simply put it in the ground and we'll backfill it and give it some water. And there we go. Our parfianca is in the ground. We've got some very low nitrogen uh, root enhancing fertilizer planted around it. And uh, in a few years we'll be eating delicious pomegranates. I don't know how fast growing this particular variety is. Um, we've had some things actually produce fruit, fruit uh, the following year in our yard. So we'll see how this one does. This tree has a lot of blossoms already forming on it. Some of them are still ready to pop out. Uh, and people have asked me in frustration, they've said, how do you get your fruit trees to blossom so much? We don't see any blossoms on ours, but the tree grows and grows and grows with a lot of green leaf and, and height growth. The secret to this is the type of fertilizer that you're using. You'll typically see <laughs> these numbers on bags of fertilizer. This says 1054. This one says 253. The first number is nitrogen. The second number usually deals with phosphorus and the third number potassium. Um, nitrogen is essential for plant growth, but when you put nitrogen on a plant by way of fertilizer, uh, you're, you're telling the plant to grow more vigorously, put more green growth out, make your limbs longer, grow taller, higher, uh, this kind of thing. But it doesn't necessarily mean, and in some instances, it can actually hinder the plant from producing buds, blossoms, and therefore fruit growth. So just to kind of give you a quick little tutorial about this, nitrogen is typically what uh, helps the green growth of the plant, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, phosphorus is important for uh, the production of blooms and fruit and potassium is good for strong root and stem development So this is what I use typically when I'm growing fruits and berries and things like that. I grow um, We get a lot of bud production and fruit production using a 253 formula and that works well for I know me. I've touched on this before but the readiness channel is about emergency preparedness. That's what our content is about That's what the channel was created for and we've talked about the model of plan, prepare, and practice. I believe that growing your own food and learning how to do this is an essential part of self-reliance and therefore emergency preparedness. Thanks for watching today's video. You know, get out in the garden and learn how to grow some food. We're going to provide some links for you down in the comment section for those of you that would like to learn a little bit more about fertilizer and some other growing tips. Additionally, I'm going to provide a link to Dave Wilson Nursery's website. There is a wealth of information on their fruit tube and other uh, blogs that they've posted on there that really can teach you how to do a lot of things uh, out in the garden. You know, being prepared doesn't always mean sitting on a sack of rice uh, with our shotgun somewhere. Um, there are plenty of problems that could happen in our society that could put this into a long-term uh, situation where having some fruits and vegetables at home in your backyard could be a, a real luxury to you and your family. So remember, get ready so that you and your family can succeed and thrive.